Hot on top now with 4.8 million. Dan Smith for 4.6 million. And the Australian Gary Benson with 4.2 million. Oh, yeah. First prize, $1,161,000. And the Andes are 10. Blinds are 40 and 80. Let's get started. Gary Benson from Australia with a jack six of clubs, Mike. 180. He's going to raise to 180. Well, Gary has been very conservative. When we started this final table and all throughout this tournament, plays pretty tight poker. Loosening up his game here, raising with the jack six. And he goes out, and now Dan Smith with a jack seven makes this call. But the flop is a 10 9 5. That gives Dan a gut shot straight draw, but he checks. And Gary hit none of that, but he's going to make a continuation bet of 240. Gary Benson, the first player to be inducted into the Australian Poker Hall of Fame. He's also the first Australian to win a World Series of Poker bracelet. Dan Smith, he's going to make this call. We'll go into the turn, and it's a nine of clubs that pairs the board. No help to either player. Again, Dan checks. Now, the Aussie's perception of the table is a very, very tight player. So when he makes moves, whether he has it or not, he gains respect there. He's going to bet again. He's what? opening up his game right now. 475, Mike. Well, look at Dan stare this guy down. And Dan lays it down, but what a play by Gary Benson. As you said, Vince, he has opened up his game shorthanded here, making some moves. You know, he not only makes moves in poker, I hear he's a pretty good chess player as well. I started playing chess at a pretty young age. My father read a book to me when I was about six years old, and uh, I started playing basically a lot of correspondence chess, and that's where I won my, my uh, international title and became an Australian champion, I think, in 2003. I think being good in chess has helped me in my poker game. It's taught me to be logical and analytical and just think situations through, being able to try and get into the head of your opponent and trying to be one step ahead just to be better than the next guy. Well, he's better than a lot of guys at chess, also at poker. Poker. We started this tournament with 449 players down to our final three, and Gary Benson out in front right now with the chip lead, 5.7 million. And don't forget, he came back about six months ago at Bellagio. He was playing slot machines, and he won a slot machine for 1.3 million. How do you like that? Yeah, he thought it was going to hit, played it six days in a row, and there it came right in for him. All right. Back to these three. Eddie Sabat has picked up a pair of nines. He'll raise, makes it 160 to go. Dan out. And now Gary Benson, who is in the big blind already. And the new chip leader. Looks down at the worst two-card holding you can start with. The seven-deuce offsuit. But look, Vince, he has raised it. 425000 Is this the Gary Benson that we know? He is a new Gary. He's getting the call, of course, by Eddie. Because Eddie's got a real hand, pair of nines. So here we go. And the flop is a nine. King three, nine. Three of a kind for Eddie Sabat. Oh, boy. This could be trouble for Gary. Whatever he bets, folks, is going into Eddie's stack. He's drawing dead already. Nothing he can catch to win this pot. And yet here he is betting. Oh, boy, he's betting 450 with nothing. And right now, Eddie Sabat is digging a hole, putting the branches, the little twigs over it, waiting for the sucker to fall in. Well, the sucker's already in there. He's in there. Just a matter how far he's going. Eddie is just going to make the call here, going to walk the dog. Oh, so Love smooth. this play by Eddie here. Sure. And an ace on the turn. So Gary's still with nothing. 750s a bit. He's going to donate some more. We know that. He doesn't know it yet. Well, 750,000 now, the bet. Well, do you raise here or not? That's a question. What a moment for Eddie Sabat from L.A counting degree at USC, and he can figure this one out. And another brilliant Ooh. call by Eddie here. Oh, just brilliant. Just, just in case his opponent fires a third shell. And a seven actually gives poor Gary a little pair of sevens. Check it. By this time, he knows those are no good. He's ready to throw up. And with no straight draw virtually and no flush draw out there, Gary knows this guy has got minimum king in his hand. Perhaps a lot more. Uh, and Eddie's trying to figure out how much he can extract. Mm -hmm. hmm. Folks, that looks like about a $2 million bet right there. And Gary, you tried this hand, but 
Back down under with those cards. Yeah, sometimes a turtle should just stay under the shell. <laughs> Gary came out, did not work out for him right there. <laughs> but right now, Eddie Sabat taking home a big one. Beautifully done. And now the blinds are going up to 50 and 100 with an ante of 15,000. Action on Gary, he's got king four. Well, he is not slowing down. 225,000 here with the king four. Eddie going out, but look at this. Two eights for Dan. Well, this guy is a special player, folks. I can tell you that. All in. Well, he's going to push all in, Mike. I played with him a couple days in this tournament, and I'm telling you, I was really impressed with him. Yeah, Gary can't call this. I think there is very much a case of getting in the zone. This tournament more so than others, I've been like tuning out the rest of the world, only focusing on the cards. I, I'm actually not sure how to regularly stay in the zone, but when you're there, it's like a special spot. You know, he's had almost 4.6 million in worldwide earnings. Just incredible. What a player he is. Well, just a moment ago, Gary Benson had the chip lead, but he's spewing him off quickly here. Action on Eddie this time. And Eddie has a queen nine of hearts. He'll raise to 200,000, Dan, going out. And Gary Benson with an 8-7. He's already invested. He'll make the call. Mess around with it. Oh, it's come four, five, six. Bingo, bango, bongo for Gary's flop. The best hand possible. The eight high straight. And it goes check, check. Ace of spades on the turn. Well, again, Gary checks. Hoping this guy's got an ace in his hand and will fire. Well, he's going to fire. He's firing with nothing. 250,000. Nice. And here goes Gary with the raise. Yep, he makes it 600 total. Well, Eddie's never going to call this bet. He's going to throw his hand away or raise it. And if he raises it, it could spell big trouble for him. Eddie Sabat gets out of Gary's way. What a flop. Sometimes it pays to pay those junk hands. That's what it did right there for the Aussie, Gary Benson. Front now with 7.3 million. Gary Benson in second with 3.9 million. And Dan Smith, who came to this final table as chip leader, now on the short stack with three left. Action's on Dan. He's got king seven. I'm going to raise. That's all right. He's going to make it 200,000. Right behind him, the Aussie, the slot machine king, <laughs> Gary Benson with an ace five. Well, Gary was the first Australian to win a World Series of Poker bracelet. Also an inaugural inductee into the Australian Poker Hall of Fame, so the guy's got credentials. He's called it. Eddie releases that hand, so two-way action, ace five versus king seven. And it's an ace king deuce. Great flop for Gary. He's got top pair. Going to check it. Dan's got second pair. Check. Dan, too smart for that. Wow. Checks his kings. Here what, we go to the turn. What a nice check by yeah. Dan Smith there. Jack of hearts on the turn. Wow, Gary checking again. Chess man very patient. And he's going to get Dan to bet. Well, you can't blame him for betting. His opponent might have a queen or a ten in his hand. You can't let him draw his hand for free. 250. You just never oh. think a guy's got an ace in his hand. Didn't raise before the flop and hasn't bet yet. Can backfire. And you don't bet your hands, but it does it this time as a six of spades on the river. And Gary's going to check again. Well, check. Dan wisely checks on the river. Gary shows the aces and takes down the pot. Played those aces about as conservative as you can. This is a good country, this one. Well, Dan Smith's got a number of friends that have won WPT titles. But if he's going to win one, he's going to have to get going because right now he's in third place with three players left. People often ask me what, what the deal is with the elbows. They're nubs. It's a new version of the high five. I invented these with Mike Watson, and it seems to caught on. And a lot of my friends now, after wins, uh, most notably Scott Seaver, when he won the WP Championship, had that picture with throwing his nubs up. That got in the local paper, which was pretty cool. Hopefully tonight I'll be throwing my nubs up. Events are doing a little nubbing, those champions. These young guys are. Oh, Only nubbing I know about the short stack. <laughs> All right. All right, now Gary Benson first to play. Cool. 
And he is calling with King Four, and right behind him, Eddie Sabat with a pair of eights. And he's the chip leader. And he's going to raise it with the eights, 450 to go. Mr. Nub himself has an ace 10 this time. It was called on the button, raised out of the small blind. Dan has a short stack. What to do here? All in. Well, there's your answer. Yeah. Just ship it. All in. I'm all out. Well, as he goes away, well, Eddie says count it. Eddie knows if he'd win this pot, he'd have Dan Smith out of his hair. Well, he's made the call. He had over a two to one chip lead playing heads up for the title. He's made the call. Now can he win the race? Dan Smith, the poker pro, 24 years old, out of Vegas. You know, he quit college after one year, decided to play poker full time. It's paid off in a big way for this young guy, but right now he needs a little luck. Invariably, after all the play, it comes down to a race to see if you can live on in a poker tournament. Wow. Two young guys with a big title on the line right now with five cards to come. Jack nine three. Well, it's come Jack nine three. So far, so good for Eddie. The two eight still out front. Certainly are. Nothing hitting for Dan. Well, you can see Dan anxiously hoping to hit something to stay alive. And he does. An ace on the turn. Dan Smith has taken the lead in this pot. Eddie must catch an eight on the river to eliminate Dan. What a fourth street. <laughs> Incredible. Down to the river. Can an eight show up? Let's see. Nope. Well, four diamonds. And Vince, give Dan Smith credit. If he just calls with the ace 10, he's... Well, they're the three players we have left. Eddie Sabat out in front, 5.3 million. Gary Benson from Australia, second with 4.3. Dan Smith, 3.9. The title up for grabs right now. Action on Eddie Sabat. He's got ace 10. I said, you know that Eddie has a superstition that once a tournament starts, if he's doing well, wears the same pants every day. Okay. Sorry to hear it. But right now he's <laughs> raised and behind him, Dan has ace nine. But Dan plays a little more conservative than people think in certain situations. This being one of them, just calls here. Okay. Now Gary Benson already has 100 in there. He says for another 100. Yeah, 545 in the pot. Why not call another 100? Three way action. And the flop is an ace, queen, eight. Ace, queen, oh, boy. Eight. Well, Dan and Eddie flop top pair. Gary's flop middle pair. But Dan and Gary check. This could get expensive. Here goes Eddie. He's making the bet 325. Got to pay to play if you want to play with Eddie. Well, again, Dan just calls, does not raise. It's like an easy getaway here for Gary. But he's going to make the call, too. I'm a little surprised by this. I am, too. And I say that because one of them might not have something, but you figure the other guy's got an ace. Why would you want to put your money in there with just two queens against two players? Ten of diamonds on the turn. That gives two pair for Eddie Sabat, aces and tens. Well, again, Dan checks his aces. Gary's looking back. He has a gut shot straight draw now. Well, he's checked into Eddie. And here comes the bet. He's betting 700,000. Uh, Dan makes a good lay down to get away from his hand. Eddie Sabat, I definitely respect. I think he's a pretty tough opponent. And I know when he's involved in a hand, he's got a big hand, so you need to be wary. So Eddie Sabat increases his chip lead, takes down a good pot there. We've reached the midway point of season 12 on the WPT and the player of the year race is still wide open. Tonight's champion will earn 1,400 coveted points, putting him at the top of the leaderboard. However, closely behind will be a number of talented players looking to jump into the lead as we enter the second half of the season. We'll continue to keep you posted on the player of the year standings as the race kicks into high gear. But now, let's get back to the action with Mike and Vince. Yes, it'll be fun to see who will become the player of the year. What an honor here on the WPT. Well, certainly all three of these guys in the hunt now with the finish in this tournament. All right. Gary Benson with a quick fold, and now Eddie Sabat, our chip leader with an ace-deuce. 
Well, it limps in with the ace high. And Dan Smith now with it. Just a jack six of diamonds. What, 275? Well, most people would be happy to get a free flop with that hand, but not Dan. He thinks his opponent's just not that strong because they didn't raise before the flop. Going to try to bet him out of it. Makes a 275 to go, but gets called by Eddie. The flop oh. is a king eight. Deuce, all diamonds. Dan has flopped a flush, but Eddie's got a pair in the nut flush draw. Buckle up, folks. We could see a lot of fireworks right here, right now. Eddie's checked and bets, of course, 300. Uh, you would think a raise would be coming here with the nut flush draw on a pair, but no. Just a call by Eddie. I would have raised it there had it been me. Ten of hearts comes off. Doesn't change a thing. Eddie checks again. And Dan with the flush. Reaching for more chips. Yep, he's bet 700,000 with the flush. Will the raise come now? It does not. Makes the call. And a deuce comes off. This gives Eddie three deuces and could spell big, big trouble for him. He's just checked and called with the nut flush draw twice. Now he's got three deuces. He is beat, of course. Dan with the flush. Let's see how much he's going to bet. On. Well, there's your answer. He has gone all in. I don't think I've found any weaknesses in Dan's game. <laughs> You're going to have to have the goods if you go up against Dan Smith. I don't think you're bluffing, Dan. Tough, tough decision here for Eddie, but Vince, this is just too hard a hand to get away from, I think. Now, if Eddie does call, though, he will lose, and Dan will become the new chip leader again. Can it be Eddie taking his time? This is why I love poker. You just never know. Well, the one advantage to land it down is you still have the big chip lead with three left, but if you make the call and win the pot, you got a huge chip lead with two left. And the toughest guy at the table, out. Okay, Dan, I call. Eddie's going to make the call, and it's a mistake. Oh, he flopped it. Nice, Dan. Dan turns it over to the pain and loathing of Eddie Sabat. Oh, that's going to hurt. Up with a pair in the nut flush draw, but it would have been the same result. Dan Smith doubling up. Dan Smith now the chip leader, 7.1 million in chips. Three players down the stretch here at Bellagio. Action on Eddie, he folds his hand. And now Dan with an uneventful 9 8 offsuit. 250. But he'll raise with it, 250 to go. Gary looks down at the Queen Four Spades. He's in. Position here, so he's going to make this call, and we're going to have a flop. Nine eight versus queen four, and the flop is a king four seven fours for Gary. Nothing for poor Dan. Well, Dan is going to continue to bet two hundred seventy-five thousand, and Gary with bottom pair is going to make the call. Fourth Street is an ace of hearts. Helps neither player. Well, will Dan try to represent aces now? Nope. He's just going to sort of wave the flag. He checks. Gary, we know he's out in front with the fours. Well, he'll probably be happy just to check it down. Well, that's what he's going to do. He's going to check. Go to the river. Oh, an eight comes oh, off. Boy. This gives Dan the best hand with two eights. But he's going to be happy to check it down. I think I got there. As will Gary. You did get there indeed. Oh, Gary says, you got to be kidding me. This guy hit an eight on the river to beat me. Gosh, dog it. Yeah, Dan Smith. Yeah. He's 24 years old. He's made close to five million in poker earnings. A guy that quit college after one year saying, wait a second. Forget this college stuff. I found my niche. It's this little game that I play around a table and take people's money. <laughs> All right, yeah. haunted this hand. <laughs> Gary Benson with the decision. He's got king seven. And he will raise it. Makes it 200,000 to go. Maybe Sabat out. And Dan Smith, our chip leader at this point with a king nine, will call. Here we go with the flop. It is a six, six, eight. Helps neither yeah. player. And is checked. Well, Gary's going to bet here. 
250,000. And Dan is going to make the call. He is slopping around, but a king hits. They both have kings now, of course. Now Dan also has a flush draw with his kings. They both check again. And a nine on the river. Dan Smith hit the top two pair in the last two cards. He certainly did, and now he's coming out with a bet. <laughs> 550 fires into Gary. Well, Gary can't wait to call yeah. here, I promise you. And he does so, not going to like it. He makes the call. He sees what's happened here. Yeah. He was out kicked anyway, but yeah, yeah. chances are it would have been a split pot most of the time. <laughs> Gary's just he's shaking his head saying, can I look at that again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Dan Smith now on a good Rush of poker as the three-handed poker continues here at Bellagio. Some other great players, Gus Hansen, Antonio Esfandiari, Joe Hashem, Chino Reem, Eugene Ketchelov. We've had some great ones win this tournament. One of these three guys looking to get on that list. All right, Mike. The Andy's have gone up to 20,000. Blind 60, 120. Quick fold by Gary Benson. And now Eddie Sabat. 120. With right? an ace cool. six. Just calling. Interesting. Right. It just seems to play so conservative. When he's no, in a hand against Dan. I think you have to raise here with ace high. Dan also content to see the flop, and the flop is a queen, nine, five. That's nines for Dan Smith. And he is checked. How is Dan Smith running right now? My golly. And Dan is going to bet the two nines. Yeah, 150,000. And he's calling, though. Well, he calls with just the ace high. Going to the turn seven of clubs. And Eddie checks. Dan's going to check behind him this time to the river card. Four of diamonds. Dan out in front. Eddie's checking. Well, I'm sure Dan feels the two nines are the best hand by now. He's going to make a little value bet of 275000 here. And Eddie with just the ace high. He's got to hope Dan's got something like King Jack or Jack 10 here. Busted the straight draw. And he's going to look him up with ace high, but it's not going to be any good as Dan shows him a two nines and takes down the pot. And you just wonder, had Eddie raised pre-flop, would Dan have even seen a flop? I don't know. Sometimes you try to disguise your ace high. You play it tricky. It backfires. Happened there. Well, Dan Smith now has over 10 million in chips. His opponents both have less than 2 million. Eddie Sabat from Los Angeles. This time, and he's got ace nine. He's going all in with it. Well, I don't blame him here. And Dan behind him has a pretty solid king queen of spades. Call. Yes, yes, he's called. Well, he can well afford to make this call. It certainly does. There's Eddie's girlfriend Melissa in the audience sweating her man. Gary gets out of their way. So they turn up the cards. Well, Eddie has the best hand. Almost a three to two favorite to double up here and stay alive. Melissa likes it. Yeah. Just like that. Fun freaking game. <laughs> what a moment for these two young guys. Well, he knows how good Dan is running right now, and he's saying to himself, come on, let my hand hold up just once here. Two highly respected young poker players going after a title. It's coming down to this. A king hits on the flop. King Jack six. Dan takes the lead. Melissa hates it. Well, Dan's playing well, running well. You're just not going to beat that combination. Turn card. It's a three of clubs. No help for Eddie. Well, he stands up, knows he has to catch an ace on the river, or he's out of here in third place. Yeah, counting major from USC. He can figure the numbers. Can he figure out hitting an ace here on the river? That's what he needs, Mike. We have pulling that one time in. Dan praying that he doesn't. Let's take a look. It's a ten of spades. Tough luck for Eddie Sabat. Got his money in with the best hand, but it just shows you when a guy's on a roll, like Dan Smith, you outdraw your opponents too. Eddie Sabat is going to go home, Vince, and say, I had it. The guy, I had two eights versus an ace ten, three blanks on the flop. He caught an ace to double up right ahead of the big lead. Absolutely. He's got nearly 12 million in chips. Gary Benson starting out with 1.7 million. Dan Smith, 24 years old. Gary Benson, 56. And Gary Benson now with an ace eight. 
he just limps in, does not raise oh, here. Trying to get tricky with that. Uh, and on the short stack. Dan with a queen five of clubs. Uh, maybe he's hoping Dan raises here and he's going to ship it all in, but yeah. I am surprised that you give a great player a free flop, especially when you have ace eye on the button. Well, Dan has just called, and we are going to see the first three. And it is a queen for Dan. And you give him a free flop, that's what happens to you. Check, check, they go. And an eight of diamonds on the turn. Now that gives Gary eights. That might spell trouble for him. Could get him more involved, that's for sure. Now Dan's coming out with a bet of 175. And sure enough, Gary makes the call. So we are going to the river. And the river card is a four of diamonds. Doesn't help Gary. So three diamonds on the board. Dan with top pair. It's going to put in the old value bet, 375. He's saying, pay me off, sir. Pay me off. Well, Gary thinking about doing just that, of course. Send the guy back to a flush. Do they really have queens? Would he bet two tens if he had them here? Wow, he's going to call this. Well, curiosity call. He calls him. Dan proudly turns up with two queens and takes down the pot. And that is really going to be big trouble for Gary Benson. He is getting whittled away right now. Dan Smith, oh so close, but putting his name on the WPT Champions Cup. Call in. Call. Gary's got a pair of fours, has gone all in. Dan with King 10 has made the call. We've got the showdown. Well, we've got another race. This time it's for Gary's tournament life. He's got the pair, Dan's got the two overcards. They get up from their seats. Dan won the key race when he had to to double up to stay alive. Now can he win one to end the tournament? Oh, man. I still didn't get a card bigger than a six. So you can create the flop below six as well. Gary giving orders to the dealers, keep them low. Young Dan Smith with an opportunity of a lifetime. This is the Doyle Brunson. Five Diamond World Poker Classic. It's all on the line right now. Everybody on their feet. Here comes the flop. A ten. A ten right on the flop. Wow. That's a title flop right there. Tens out in front for Dan. Vince, the guy is playing great and running great. Tough combination to beat. But it's not over. Club, club. Gary's <laughs> praying for the four. Two cards to come. Fourth Street coming up right now. Nine of diamonds comes off. We are down to the river. Gary Benson must catch a four on the river. Needs a Colt 44 or he's going to be shot down as our runner up. Oh boy, he needs a two outer on the river to stick around. Otherwise, young Dan Smith, daring Dan Smith, will take down this title. Let's go to the river. Any four will do, Dylan. Here come the nubs. Here come the nubs. <laughs> Let's let me know. <laughs> well, we're about to see the Dan Smith nub. <laughs> River card. It's a seven. There you go. Dan Smith has done it. He has captured his first WPT title. Incredible comeback by Dan Smith. He has done it. He's our champion right now.